I, I'm the biggest Anglophile in the whole world. I really love it. I just love it. Yes, of course, but I must tell you, Vincent... And I can still afford it. I... <laughs> Well, there's very few of us. Can, You're like, so it's right. Good, good to have you here. Yeah. You're the first American tourist this year. You I know I am. For I goodness' sake, spend money, will you? I was booked on the QE too, but I didn't take it. Yes. <laughs> to take a later cruise. Yes. <laughs> Find any changes over the years here? Oh yes, I was here as a student about 45 years ago, and it was very cheap then. You know, it really was wonderful, and, and it was very exciting. London it really is. The theatre here is so marvellous, and now it's so expensive. Nobody can go to it too. You know? Yeah, it is. Really it makes it very awful. difficult, yeah. doesn't it? But well, you see, uh, to be honest, Vincent, I get a bit fed up with um, American, not, not men of your great stature, no, but the please. odd American, yes, two bit there entertainer. There are a lot of odd Americans. Two bit entertainer like Sammy Davis Jr. comes <laughs> over. And I, to be honest, he drives me a bit gaga yeah. Yeah. by saying things yeah. like, here we are, I'm back in London, my second home. It's wonderful to yeah. be here. I love London, all yeah. that kind of thing. And I don't believe him. But you got to remember, he, he kissed Nixon. Uh, <laughs> That's what happened to him. You never kissed Nixon? Never. You kissed George Washington, didn't you? He slept here, but I didn't kiss him. <laughs> I would have if I'd been around. It was Jefferson was the one I used to go with. <laughs> You're doing a new film with two old mates of yours, aren't you? Christopher yeah. Lee and Peter Cushing. Yes, it's wonderful. I really can't wait to get together with them again. It would be such fun. <laughs> you know, one time, it's a very funny thing. I don't know whether you believe in astronomy or not, do you? And all those Geminis and things certainly, like that. Certainly, certainly I Well, do, you know, yes. Christopher Lee and I were born the same day. He claims 10 years later, but that's a lie. And uh, <laughs> Peter Cushing was born the day before, 26th of May, and, and Christopher and I was at 27th of May. Well, one time I was here doing a film with both of them, and I thought it'd be kind of fun to have a party. So I looked around for a place, and I found a marvelous place was the Chamber of Horrors in Madame Tussauds. And we had a birthday party there. It was wonderful fun. You couldn't tell who were the actors. <laughs> I took around, there was Christopher standing there. You but know. you've got a waxwork of yourself in, in Hollywood, haven't yes, you? Yes, I do. I do indeed. I'm one of the, I'm one of the uh, figures in a waxwork. That's very alarming. Wait till you are. It won't be long now, but wait till you are. I am. I am in one in, not in the Chamber of Hollywood. No, the one in Blackpool. I remember you in that one yes. there. Yes. It's very alarming. You know, I, and also, at the, at, the, at the Buena Park Waxworks, I'm one of the figures, and then they have a thing now that they've just opened up called the Black Box. And you walk into it, and all the kids are invited in, and then this sepulchral tone comes out <laughs> of a coffin, and it's me. It's me, can you believe it? <laughs> Lying there in that coffin, happy as a clam. <laughs> They paid me a lot of money. It's a lot of money. <laughs> Didn't you substitute for a waxwork and frighten yes. the daylight? Yes. One time they decided to do a gag and they took my wax figure out and put me on a thing and brought me in. And I was standing there with a syringe in the house of wax. And as the crowd came around, I moved around like this and squirted water <laughs> in the face of the <laughs> She thought she'd wet her pants. It wasn't <laughs> What I love about you, Vincent, is that you're prepared to do everything. I'll do anything. You're sort of, you're a sort of American Beryl Reed, really. I'm taller than Beryl. But you know, you're known in the States, apart from from the sheer horror of yeah. you, you're known for the um, the artistic side of oh, things. Oh, I'm you're terribly a bit of a, cultured. Well, a tremendously a bit of a Renaissance man. Oh, really. definitely. All round. Born again every morning. Yes. And you wonder about the nights, let me tell you. <laughs> no, no, I, I, uh, I've studied art here at the Courtauld Institute in London, and I've sort of kept it up all my life, and I love it. Every time I get a chance, I go to the British Museum, I see if you've stolen any new things from other countries, and then I go to the Victoria and Albert Museum, and I look to see whether Victoria and Albert are still there, and they are. <laughs> and uh, I have a wonderful time going around London. I know London very, very well. I really do. You used to buy art for people. Did you act as an art advisor? Yes, did, I bought 55,000 works of art in about three years, all over the world. It was wonderful. It was like being a second-hand millionaire, yeah. spending somebody else's money. <laughs> <laughs> but three million dollars. Now, you're also on the stage. You do a tour of Oscar Wilde. Yes. Bon mots. Is it, is it uh, little bits of, like, Ballad of Reading Jail and all yeah. this? Do you do the tragedy as well as the humour, or yes. is it just the, yes. the throwaway lines? I, I think it's lines. probably the most... Uh, the most 
successful thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah. I've traveled all over the world with it, in about 240 cities. I've played it about 800 times, all over the world. It's wonderful. But it, it really is a setup. It's something that I've always thought of. When Wilde was exiled in Paris, at the end of his life, he was broke, and so he gave a benefit for himself. I'm giving one next week for myself, <laughs> if you would like to come and bring money. And um, this thing is, 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 is just getting up and entertaining the audience. And he has wonderful things to say about America. You know, when he was a very young man, he toured America as a lecturer. Uh, they took him to Niagara Falls, and they told him that all the brides came to Niagara Falls. And he looked at it for a minute, and he said, it must be the second greatest disappointment in American married life. <laughs> get it? No. 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 no, none of no. us get that. No. No. This is a very clean-limbed audience, Vincent. I none of you racist one stuff. Limb. Said that pretty girl. Oh, isn't she beautiful? She could read news to me any night. She doesn't like that kind of talk, Vincent. No, I know. Please. <laughs> Why didn't you find out more about her? She wouldn't tell me, Vincent. You didn't ask. She wouldn't tell well, me. Well, I met her backstage and I asked her several things and she told me right off. Oh, Mind your own business, is what she said. <laughs> <laughs> now look, yes. give, us, give us a reading from, some, from Oscar Well, Wilde. Oscar Wilde. What's your favorite bit? I think my favorite bit is he comes out and he says, uh, with your kind permission, I should like to read you a poem. Well, that is to say, it is a poem committed to memory. And the reason it is committed to memory is due to the fact that I wrote it. <laughs> Yes, I have all of my poems committed to memory, with the exception of La Bella Donna della Mia Menti, which is uncommittable. I have chosen The Harlot's House, a title I trust will not disappoint you. The Harlot's House. We caught the tread of dancing feet. We loitered down the moonlit street and stopped beneath the Harlot's House. Inside, above the din and fray, we heard the loud musicians play the Troyes Liebesherz of Strauss. Like strange mechanical grotesques making fantastic arabesques, the shadows raced across the blind. We watched the ghostly dancers spin the sound of horn and violin, like black leaves wheeling in the wind. Like wire-pulled automatons, slim silhouetted skeletons went sidling through the slow quadrille, then took each other by the hand and danced a stately saraband. Their laughter echoed thin and shrill. Sometimes a clockwork puppet pressed a phantom lover to her breast. Sometimes they seemed to try and sing. Sometimes a horrible marionette came out and smoked its cigarette upon the steps like a live thing. Then turning to my love, I said, the dead are dancing with the dead. The dust is whirling with the dust. But she, she heard the violin and left my side and entered in. Love passed into the house of lust. Then suddenly the tune went false, the dancers wearied of the waltz, the shadows ceased to wheel and whirl, and down the long and empty street, the dawn, with silver sandaled feet, mm. crept like a frightened child. Pretty good Beautiful, stuff. Beautiful, yes. Wonderful. <laughs> you know... The you greatest know, last line in the history of the world was Wilde when he was dying in a terrible cheap hotel in Paris. He looked at the wallpaper, which was terrible, and he said, one of us has got to go. <laughs> <laughs> and he went. <laughs> You've retained the marvelous sense of humor and all the urbanity that I remember of you a couple of years ago. Vincent Price. Bless you. Thank you. And so, friends, it's good night and thanks to Ned Sharon and Gilbert O'Sullivan, Selena Scott, Vincent Price, and to you for joining us for the eight weeks that must have seemed so much longer to you. Of Wogan. Maybe we'll be back, but do you know, somehow I doubt it. <laughs> I'll see you on the radio in the morning. Good night. <laughs>
And just in case you didn't know, Terry Wogan goes on and on on Radio 2 every weekday morning between 7.30 and 10 o'clock. This is BBC One Scotland.